be slightly mad to start off with to make yourself do it, to go in every day. Your legs feel achy and your feet hurt. You sort of do it without thought, really. Like cleaning one's teeth. Having breakfast. Gets the blood rushing and wakes you up. One, one. Oh, careful. One stop. Forward and back, forward and back, and all the way around. Now from there you go, use your arms, now use your brain as well, and uh, up, and uh, through, and this is the lifted one. One and a half hours of it, three studios full, every day, including Saturday for those who want it. I haven't got the kind of body that can work without doing class every day. If you stop, if you start walking out and copping out, then it becomes a habit. It's so easy to just lie in bed and think, I just can't cope this morning, I won't do class, I'll go in for the 12 o'clock rehearsal. And you just, it's fatal, because you end up doing it more and more, and your technique, which is the big thing that you rely on, just goes down the drain. But there's not just one Royal Ballet Company. 200 miles away, the touring wing called Sadler's Wells Royal Ballet move into a theatre in the provinces. And with class still going on, in the London suburbs, in Richmond Park, at White Lodge, which was once an actual royal residence and is now a Royal Ballet boarding school, the very young have quite a different kind of class. That is the Sahara Desert. The word Sahara is Arabic. It's an Arabic word and it actually means desert. Don't arch anybody behind you, those attitudes. And uh, up, there was an effacé. And strong, a spoon, still. The scale of it, the size of it, I mean, I had great hopes of it being a, a prominent company in the country, but I didn't really visualise quite the size it would grow to. 1931, the beginnings. Not called the Royal Ballet then, but the Vic Wells Ballet. Six girls and the founder, Ninette de Valois, who danced with Diaghilev. He always had this feeling about England. He used to say, in fact, that he thought the next ballet company would come from this country. Because nobody thought at that time that it could ever happen, except Ninette. Ninette never doubted for one second. That was her strength. It was a sort of nucleus at that time, and um, we used to have to supplement the corps de ballet with, with the opera chorus doing the sort of walking on part. The girls were all rather dumpy, if I remember rightly. But we were all very enthusiastic. They had a love of the theatre for the sake of the theatre. That's why they came. They couldn't come for any other reason. And we wouldn't have dreamt of asking where we were going or what we were going to do. You'd be told, uh, that's no concern of yours, young man. You just get on and learn your ronde -jons. But they were the real pioneering days, and that's when you don't mind how hard you work. Uh, sheer mm. grit, sticking to it and getting on with it is, is, you know, what I think this is all about. It's like any sport. You know, you're always going through a particular new time or length barrier. We dance now for longer sections. You know, a, a variation in a classic is sort of half the length of, say, some of these movements we now have to do in the, in the ballets. That's what we're asked to do all the time, really, is push ourselves beyond what we think we can do. <laughs> and the result of hard work. Brian Shaw, in a later television version of Ashton's first ballet for the company, Les Rendezvous. And Brian Shaw, now ballet master. Change, second group. Stay still on point, but still. Thank you. Thank you. Good girls. You tried it all. Why are you on the floor? You know, go away.